Hey guys, welcome to another Emmy Creations vlog and today we're actually going over a recap of what happened in January. If you remember from the last video, we're going over recaps every month to kind of show you what the good, bad, and just what's been going on with the business. First off, as you can see, I'm not in my horror room, so horror won't be in this video this time, which is kind of sad, but it's kind of cool too because we are in the Bahamas and I'm going to show you some footage of that and I'll explain everything about why I'm in the Bahamas next video. So if you're curious about that, be sure to tune in for the next video and I'll go over why I'm here. But for now, I'll give you a little snippet of our Bahama trip this week. What's up, private? They have an aquarium too. And at the end of the video, as usual, we're going over a little bit of my sales numbers and plans for next month. So the main thing we've been focusing on this month is our winter release. For those curious about my release schedule, they're usually centered around markets or wholesale events. That includes the fair marketplace that happened at the beginning of February. So the fair marketplace is totally online and fair actually promotes it themselves and we are free to offer discounts. Discounts can be anywhere from 10 to 15% off and fair has a kind of match or discount deal. So if I offer 5% off, they will offer 5% off giving the retailer a total of 10% off. So it's a cool, awesome little event where they help us offset some of the discount costs. And if you are on FAIR, I do recommend you try it out once or twice as long as your margins can handle this discount. So I was a little tired from my November release. So for those who remember, I released all my socks during November. And during that time, um, right after that, we had our December rush. So a lot of retailers know the whole December buying madness. This year, uh, a lot of my retailers got involved too. So wholesale was crazy. Online was crazy, and I, I think I had an event during that time, the uh, Emerald Comic Con. So that was a little hectic, and December as a result was crazy for me. And when I finally settled in in January, I was just pooped. I was so tired, and I could barely fit a release out because I think I was just recuperating the first two weeks. So I was like, I still wanted to do a release for the winter fair market. So I tried to do something small, a very small release that ended up being 10 stickers total. Stickers have always been a bestseller in both the retail and the wholesale market. So I always thought stickers, why not? Um, they're easy to make, they're fast to make because I get them done in the US with standout stickers. And standout stickers uh, turnaround time is usually only a week at max. So I know they're able to turn around fast. So the actual production of the sticker, I started two weeks before the market, which for me is really behind. But we did end up getting everything on time, which was awesome. And for this release specifically, this comes to my second thing that I did this month is I moved all my photography in-house. So I used to hire a photographer, a product photographer specifically, to photograph all my products before each release. So I would actually have to spend a bit of a time to contact her, ship her stuff, and then give her a shot list of what I needed. Because of the tight schedule for this month specifically, and tight monetary budget from leftover from COVID, I decided to do it myself. I invested in a new lens and then some new background material and stuff like that. I also got some backgrounds from a brand I recently found on Instagram, surprisingly, called Replica Surfaces that have these beautiful tiles of um, mimic surface. Uh, some of them have wonderful colors on them. So I got a blue, a pink, and a kind of like a white to match my brand colors. But I really like the company. It fits my little like photo space perfectly. So it worked out well. And then we went out to buy some photography back lay stuff for uh, flat lay photos and some notebooks of my brand colors, some plants, and some other cute fun items. So I use the same camera for vlogging as I do for photography. For those curious, I use the Canon M50 Mark II. And then the lens I use to shoot is the Canon 28mm. 
And then we had our first market of 2022, the Riverside Lunar Festival. So the Lunar New Year's is always moving around every single year, but we try to have at least one or two events regarding the Lunar Year, mainly because my audience and my art is a little Asian based. So all the Lunar New Year's festivals do pretty well for us. So this year we're trying a new one and it's called the Riverside Lunar Festival. It's run by Panama Night Market and this was our first event with them, but it turned out super well. They were wonderful. They did a great job. It was just a street fair. So they booked three streets, I believe, in Riverside and blocked it off at the ends and then they had vendors lined up. So that was super fun. So regarding uh, the market, we did do well, um, but it was expensive for what it was. So usually street fairs are on the cheaper side just because you're not blocked off, you're not fenced off, they don't have to pay for that kind of organization. But this street fair specifically was as expensive as one of our night markets. So that kind of surprised me, but it wasn't too bad. I was still very positive about it. And we did make, enough to pay off our booth and make some money so that's always awesome just for residents we always try to pay off the booth at least the first day or for one day events of the first half of the day so for the rest of the event you are making profit the event hours are relatively long so we did go into the night they did provide power so they recommended us bring our usual light setup and since we were already using those for night markets it's in our show preparation list, so it's not a big deal. Um, but for those people that aren't familiar with night markets, uh, having and requiring to bring lights can be a little bit of a ordeal. So if you guys are interested, I do have a full checklist of the stuff I bring to every outdoor market. It includes the lights, the extension cords, the walls we use to close our booth at night, everything. So go ahead and check that out. I'll pop the link in the top. In relation to the market, every beginning of the year, we try to advance our boot setup a little bit. And this year, I wanted to do something that I've been wanting to do for a while. So during one of the markets for, I don't know how, but one of my tent walls ripped. It like ripped from top to bottom and I was trying to keep it together with like duct tape and it was terrible. So I was like, I need to buy new tent walls anyways. So I decided to go full out and customize my tent top and my tent walls so i actually got a new top and uh two side tent walls that are fully customized and then the two leftover ones are just white because i didn't want to pay for all four walls and two seemed enough to look pretty good it turned out so awesome and the brand we use is easy up we bought our easy up tent originally with just white in 2017 and Fast forward so many years later, we are finally upgrading the tent outside to customize ones. And I just reached out to the company, they provided templates for us and we sent over the design, they provided a mock-up for us as well. So I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It, The only downside that I personally saw was like the top of our tent specifically, we had the pyramid tent it wasn't very slopey so the point in the center did not go up really high so at the ground level you can't really see the designs too well it wasn't a big deal for me because oddly you can still see the design when you walk into the booth it kind of like came through the white of the wall so that was interesting but i'm so happy with it and um if there's any drone footage our tent could be seen so i did want to share my numbers for january 2022 i personally want to share my numbers because i know a lot of people watching are interested in getting into becoming a full-time artist or doing conventions full-time conventions markets that kind of thing full-time and they wanted to get an idea of potentially what you can make in a month and to see if it works for them before they go all out. So I know when I first started, I had a lot of issues wondering like, can I even make the same amount as I do in my day job? Is this like a possibility for me? So hopefully these numbers give you a little bit of insight. I'm not gonna go into too much details unless you guys want it. So if you guys want like the percentage thing that I did in my last video, be sure to put it in the comments below. But for now, I'm just gonna go over like overarching numbers for the month. 
So for January, I made $5,000 for the whole month. Now this is gross sales, so this is not what I take home. If you remove all the product costs and costs and that kind of thing, I could probably take home around $3,000. And I always invest part of that back into the business. So it kind of depends on how much money you personally need for living. So um, I invest what I don't need to live on back into the business. So that's how I work around it. All, my monthly income is kind of weird. Um, it's hard to say I sold that much this month because a lot of the end time I get is on a net 30 deal. For those not familiar for wholesale, I am on a net 30 plan for FAIR and ABOUND, which are my two most popular platforms. And what that means is whatever amount I sell this month, I don't get paid until 30 days later. So the income, the 5K, part of the 5K that I got this month was actually sold last month. So that's kind of like the weird part of it. And on another note, my pop-up is similarly like that. So everything I sell in December, I get paid for in January. So this 5k seems a little bloated for um, people that are familiar with January scales because January kind of dies down after the Christmas hype. But keep in mind, my Christmas hype is paid to me this month, which is why my January numbers can be a little more bloated than other people or in relation to my other months. So we're done with January. So let's talk about February. Um, I'm already in the middle of February, technically, as I'm filming this. But for February, we have a few things planned. For one, we have the Tet Festival. The Riverside Lunar Festival was at the end of January. And then the Tet Festival was at the beginning of January. So I had only a week between the two events, which was always exciting. But we'll go over the Tet Festival and the results of the Tet Festival for next video. And then the rest of this month, I really wanted to focus on advancing my emails. So I do have a monthly wallpaper that I have been doing that encourages people to sign up for my mailing list. And then I wanted to advance my mailing list to have kind of like a segmented out script. The first being welcome, you know, the second being a little bit more about me and the business, the third being a little bit more about me and my products. I'm super excited to flesh it out. I've already finished writing a lot of it. I'm slowly making art for each of the emails so it looks beautiful and people are excited when they receive it. So hopefully by the end of the month, I'll have that all done and then you guys can sign up for it if you haven't already to see how it looks. And if I have time, I'm hoping to move around my stock room a little bit to prepare for a new release. Usually I try to do two releases, one as the winter fair market in January or February. And then the second one I try to do around June. So I'm kind of preparing for that a little bit by making room in my stock room so I kind of know what I can make because I don't want to make something and not have room to store it. So I think I'm gonna, for now, focus releases around space <laughs> I have to make sure I don't overload myself and not have room to put anything. So that concludes January's 2022 recap video. Hopefully that was interesting for you guys. And if you have certain segments you like better than others, please let me know in the comments below so I can make that change to the next video. So for the next video, we're probably going over the tech festival and the email revamp. So if you're looking forward to that, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you get notifications when our next video goes live. And be sure to also push the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.